Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I am Bearded Dev, and today we've got a very exciting video looking at logical query processing. So, what we're going to be covering today is how a query is written and how a query is processed by the database engine. So, let's jump over to SQL Server Management Studio and go through some examples. So, first of all, we're going to have a look at how we'd write an initial query. And we're just going to start off with a select all from the order details table. So if I just execute that now, um, what we're going to say is where our order ID is not equal to one. And then what we want to do is group by our order ID. So we're going to return our order details order ID as order ID and then we're going to count our PID which actually refers to our products and then we're going to add a having clause so once we've grouped by our order ID we're going to say having count uh, PID so the number of products uh, greater than one we'll say I'll just give this an alias as num of books and then we want to order our results uh, so order number of books uh, descending so if I just run that query now uh, we can see we've got four order IDs and a different amount of books for each order so you can see there how I wrote the query uh, select and then our columns from our table name, our where clause, so our predicate filter. Uh, we're grouping by our order ID. Having, so we're applying that to each group, that filters each group uh, where our product ID, uh, the number of products is greater than one. And we're also adding an order by clause in there as well. So that is generally, well, that is how we would write uh, a query. But what we need to look at now is how that query is actually processed. So it's actually processed in a different order than we would write it. SQL stands for a structured query language and it's, it allows us to write in plain English. So that is how we would give instructions or, or talk to something. So now we're going to look at how that query would be processed by the database engine. So there is a logical uh, processing order. So it always starts with the from clause. So that will include join. So we're always going to start with our tables, our sets, first of all. Then we're going to apply our where clause, so our, our predicate filters. Then we're going to look at the group by clause then having, then select, and then order by. This order is, uh, is vitally important to remember for particularly looking at queries if you want to optimize performance. So if somebody ever gives me an extensive query, I will always go straight to the from clause. Are there any problems with the joins there? Are there tables that we don't need? Then I'd look at the where clause, go through the group by. Obviously, not all queries have all of these present, um, and also after the order by we might have a number seven which could be a uh, top as well so it's important for that and it's important from an alias in perspective as well and we'll go through an example now so one thing we can see within this query within the select statement I've done a account ODP ID as number of books and then I've referred to that within the order by statement so that is okay because the order by is evaluated after select so it already knows that name so let's try and say within the having clause let's say having number of books greater than one and let's try and execute this query now so it's going to give us an invalid column name so because the having clause is evaluated before select it doesn't know that we've aliased that column so if you're aliasing columns within the select they can only be referred to within the order by clause because that will about be evaluated after it 
let's also have a look at this so if we said um, within our select uh, alias column number of books and we'll just multiply that by two uh, we'll change our having clause back to just be a simple count of our product ID, our book ID, and let's try and execute this now. I'll just add in the greater than one. So we're going to get invalid column name number of books because although we've aliased it within the select statement, each option, each column within the select statement needs to be evaluated at exactly the same time it isn't within the database engine because it can't process that workload at the same time or it's not always done that way um, but it needs to return the results as if it is so if you alias a column within the select statement you cannot refer to that alias within the same select statement because it needs to return the results as if it had processed that select all at once so the logical query processing order is very important to remember. It allows us to understand how the database engine is doing the work for us. So if it was to initially try and process a select first, where without us telling it the table name that we're going to go to, you can understand how there would be some confusion there. So if you're writing out select statements and you are getting errors like these, like invalid column name, then have a look at the logical query process in order. Start with the from clause, go into where, group by, having, select, and then order by is evaluated last of all. Like I say, top could be considered sort of step seven after that. So that order is vitally important to remember, especially when you start looking at query execution plans and how that query is performing. Now I have got on screen a large query, so we can see here there's a eight ta uh, nine tables involved. So what I'm going to demonstrate now is it's not always the case. So the database engine itself is is a ve is very clever. So it won't always start with just joining all the tables together. So what I'm going to do is just right click on the screen and click to include actual execution plan. So we can see here we've got a from, uh, we've got a number of tables there that we're joining together. They are quite large tables. We've got a where clause, um, United Kingdom and city not equal to London. Uh, we're grouping by our sales order ID, having our count sales order detail ID greater than one. And um, we're ordering by R, which we've got alias within our select, which is a count of sales order detail ID. So if I execute that query now, We've got the results as we expected. I'm just going to open up the execution plan and I will be doing a lot more videos on the channel on how to read execution plans and query optimization as well. Now if we have a look at where this execution has actually started, um, if we have a look, uh, it's difficult to scroll down and highlight it at the same time. Um, but you can see under the list of options we've got that predicate. So what it's actually doing is starting off straight away and filtering the data by United Kingdom. So if we were to have a look and say, in fact, I'll just show, if you have a look at the, at the query, you can see what we thought would happen, that this would start at sales order detail. And we can see here, uh, count of number of rows. We're only actually working with about 1500 rows at this point. Um, so they have been filtered down by using uh, city not equal to London and the country not being uh, the country being United Kingdom. If I just do a count from our table, uh, so we'll just do a count all from sales dot sales order detail. Uh, we can see there there's 121,000 rows in there. So SQL has recognized that if it started at that point, it would be dealing with a lot of data. And it recognized if I start filtering straight away, I can use less data and I can make the query faster. Like I say, we're going to look at a lot of videos on query optimization on how and how queries are processed by the database engine. But it is very important to remember 
the logical order that queries are processed. So once again guys that order is we start with the from clause including joins we look at the where clause stage 3 group by having select and then finally order by. So I really hope you have enjoyed that video and we'll take something away from it. Do check out my other videos on my channel. Uh, subscribe to the channel and click that notification button to be made aware of when I am uploading videos. I do upload videos as regular I can, as regular as I can. I try and get a couple up a week. So if you've got interest uh, in anything to do with data, I've got videos on Excel, Business Intelligence, SQL. Um, thanks for watching.